it's hard to remember that how wealthy slave owners were. You, if you don't know this, you can't imagine Mississippi. Why we think of Mississippi as the poorest state in the Union, mm -hmm. but in its day, it was the richest. Yeah. It had the most millionaires. Yeah. Mi ri Mississippi was a, a tr the slave owners were not just wealthy; they were tremendously wealthy. Mm -hmm. But their wealth was in the form of people mm -hmm. that they who owned. were human savings accounts. It's evident that he cares. What do you care about? Welcome to the Rock Newman Show. It's the Rock Newman Show. The Minister of Wellness Ministries and Rock Newman Show 2.0 present free community health fair and seminar Saturday, March 18th, 2023 at Union Temple Baptist Church, Washington, D.C. Or as VP before we reach capacity, DMV Health Fair dot eventbrite.com or click the link in the description box. If you can't make it in person, no worries. You can purchase the live stream link by visiting the minister of wellness.com under healing services. Or once again, just click that link in the description box, calling all potential vendors, sponsors, or volunteers. Please submit a contact form via the minister of wellness.com or call 888-847-8026. That's 888-847-8026. It's high time for a health revolution. Mm -hmm. And they have slaves right there mm -hmm. in the Capitol. And you know, I, I'd like to take a moment there to do something because the knee jerk reaction of too many today who don't want to deal with the history of, slave, of slavery or the vestiges of slavery would say that was back then and that's what they did then to very disingenuously ignore that very clearly those were people, there were people who had a moral compass that said unmistakably, not only is this wrong, it is terrorizing, it is horror, it is a horror, it is dehuman, dehu, dehumanizing also. And those individuals that we're talking about, the quote unquote beloved founders and framers of the Constitution ignored the morality of the issue and absolutely went full steam ahead as barbarians contri continuing to contribute to and develop and to grow slavery. I want to really draw a line in the sand there for those who might be watching, who might have the tendency to look back and say, why are you talking about it in 2019? Well, and Jefferson in particular, to go back to Jefferson for a minute, Jefferson in particular was very aware that all over Europe there were anti-slavery people because they were his friends in the French Revolution. Uh, Jefferson was very well aware of this. Um, so Jefferson can't simply be excused as being a man of his time because other men of his time were anti-slavery, other men of Absolutely. his time fought against slavery, Absolutely. and other men of his <coughs> time freed their enslaved people, as George Washington did on his death. Mm -hmm. But to do that meant that one was voluntarily impoverishing oneself. Mm -hmm. I saw a term used in your book, and it was fancy girls. Mm. Yeah. When I say I had a visceral response, mm -hmm. oh. it was because of that little four foot nine lady that you just saw. Yeah. And it was because of this photo right here, because all three of them would have been fancy girls. Now, before you respond, what, my first love, you know how to say there's no love like a first love. My first love was a very, very, very dark, black chocolate, just beautiful woman. So when I imagined the plight of the fancy girls, which I want you all to talk about, and then I imagined the plight of this very dark, black, beautiful woman and what she must have experienced, that was the source of my visceral response. Ned. Fancy girls were, <clears throat> it was a polite term, 
universally understood for sex slaves, fancy girls were light-skinned women who, were, who brought very high prices in auction. Young, young beautiful, generally light-skinned women who were sold as fancy girls. This was always a part of the slave trade. Yeah. And I know you talk, uh, I've heard you talk about fancy girls being in, for example, in New Orleans mm -hmm. and the riverboat gambler right. buying, you know, winning, uh, New winning Orleans at the was craft particularly table or known and then the, the, and then, and then the riverboat gambler would buy a couple of the fancy girls mm -hmm. and then that riverboat gambler added another title to his name, which ultimately was Degenerate Pimp. Mm -hmm. And then he would rent them out. He would rent them out. Or perhaps. And, 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 and if they had, I want to keep this front and center sitting mm -hmm. at this table, they had no right or recourse. None. None. No, and maybe maybe not rent them out by the hour. Maybe negotiate longer term contracts sure. for them. Sure. Although the the working life of a fancy girl was fairly short, mm -hmm. uh, because there was always a newer, younger one available. There's an absolutely heart rending letter that we reproduce in full in the book by a woman who's been so who's uh, somehow managed to write a letter from a slave trader's yard in Houston, where she's been discarded uh, and is being sold. Understand that being sold out of one market into another almost always meant going into a worse environment. Mm -hmm. It was like being sent to prison or yeah. being sent to a worse prison. Yeah. And to be sold into Texas yeah. in the 1850s yeah was a horrifying prospect. Mm -hmm. And there's this just absolutely heart-rending letter in the book from a woman named Virginia. Yes. Who's yes. telling the story of what it feels like. Mm -hmm. It's one of, it, something else we have to remember, now they have no recourse, very few had literacy skills. Yeah. It was prohibited to teach enslaved people to read and write. And so they left no record of their thoughts yeah. in any written form. Uh, they may survive in other ways through oral tradition or family tradition, but uh, there's um, the, the 100 or so so-called slave narratives yeah. that were published yeah. and the couple 3,000 oral histories that were taken have to stand in for millions. Yes. What in the world was your motivation for writing this book? This story has to be told. A whole lot in American history makes no sense if you don't understand this, and a whole lot makes sense if you do. The basic, even the human side of it aside, just as an understanding of how the American economy was based on and distorted by the slave domestic slave trade, which is to say the slave breeding industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's simply, a lot of American history is simply incomprehensible if you don't understand that in the slave states, people were money. Why was, why were the slave states so insistent on annexing Texas and the non-slave states not wanting to annex Texas? Because very simply, the mere rumor of cotton plantations springing up in eastern Texas that would need to buy labor from the slave owners that already existed in the south jacked up the value of their portfolios, made them richer people. It's, it's hard to remember that how wealthy slave owners were. You, if you don't know this, you can't imagine Mississippi. Why We think of Mississippi as the poorest state in the Union, mm -hmm. but in its day, it was the richest. Yeah. It had the most millionaires. Yeah. Mi ri Mississippi was, a, a tr the slave owners were not just wealthy, they were tremendously wealthy, mm -hmm. but their wealth was in the form of 
people mm -hmm. that they who own. were human savings accounts right. because there was no reliable national money. Mm -hmm. And we did not get a reliable national money until <coughs> the Gr Abraham Lincoln's administration and the Greenback, mm -hmm. which is pretty much concurrent with the Emancipation Proclamation, mm -hmm. and which would not have been possible with the vastly inflated human assets on the books. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. It's oh, a complicated it, subject. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> the fact that every new child that was born was, depending on the era, 50, 75, $100 in credit, which is to say money, mm -hmm. new money mm -hmm. was a, a, a human being born was the creation of money. Of more wealth. And the amount of wealth that the South held in enslaved property, mm -hmm. which was estimated at the time, popular, commonly estimated at the time of secession to be $4 billion, that was a sum that was so in excess of, it was a multiple of all the currency in circulation. Mm -hmm. It was a multiple of the worth of the land. Mm -hmm. It was a vast amount of money that only existed on paper mm -hmm. and only resided in the bodies of labor. Labor was capital. And if you don't know this, you don't understand the the levers that moved American history. Yeah. 